CBS presents this program in color. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. to see it before I decide. You understand? Oh, of course. Would you like to take it out on approval? Oh, yes, may I? Well, we wouldn't have it any other way. After all, how many times in your life are you going to buy a wedding dress? <laughs> She'll be half as happy as I was in this dress. Your pin. I never took it off. Needs a little alteration. Don't laugh. I was practically her size in those days. <laughs> now, the ribbons are ordered in pink and white. Right. Which just leaves printed napkins and the bride and groom for the top of the cake. Uh-oh. What is it? Forgetting something. Oh, you forgot to signal when you reverse lanes. <laughs> Mom, this is important. We've only got ten days left. I know. And we're inexperienced. This is our first wedding. Uh huh? The mint wafers. That's it, in pink and white. You know something? You two are pretty terrific. Why, Mom? Well, I don't know, being so thrilled about Betty Jo's wedding. After all, she is the youngest. You two are older. She's getting married first, and yet. Look, I'm your mother. I don't have to explain why I think you're terrific. <laughs> but you are. Mom, I found it. I found it. You found what, dear? My wedding dress. Oh? It's just what I've been looking for. Steve had to fly into Riverdale on business. And while we were there, I checked out all the stores. I found this at Emerson's, and they let me take it home on approval. I know you'll love it. I just know you will. Well, if it's what you want, dear, I'm sure I will. Oh, where are you going? What's that? Oh, uh, th this is uh, some curtain material I found. I was going to take it to Miss Walker and have her make them because we're so busy and everything. Oh, well, I wanted you to see this right away. Is that the way, Karen? Oh, sure, dear. Just can wait. Yes, we're ready. Okay, here goes. Dum da dum. Dum dum da dum. Dum dum da dum. Betty Jo, you look beautiful. What do you think, Ma? It's lovely, truly lovely. It's so beautiful, I could cry. Me too. Well, you better not. You've only got it on approval. <laughs> uh, not anymore. Oh, it's mine, isn't it, Ma? Of course, dear. It's yours. <laughs> Boy, I've had faster service from a dog sled. <laughs> well, you did it. You beat your old record for a slow for 16 minutes. How come you in such an off hard hurry? Because for two weeks I've been waiting for this little beauty to come to the post office. Mind telling me what's in it? No, I don't mind. But I'm more proud of this than anything I ever done in my life. It's a wedding dress for Betty Jo. A wedding dress? Yes, sir. I can hardly wait to see their faces when they see it. 
through six catalogs before I found just what I wanted. We're in good health and with my blessing. Oh, Uncle Joe, you shouldn't have done it. Don't worry, your pretty little head. That hunting rifle I was saving up for can wait another season. I made up my mind there was no sacrifice too great for one of my favorite nieces on the biggest day of her life. Uncle Joe, this is a wonderful gesture on your part, but I think you should know. Oh, uh, not now, Mom. Yeah, Kate, hold that mushy stuff. There'll be enough of that at the wedding. Glad you liked it, youngin'. We're gonna have to tell him sometime. Oh, Mom, I'd rather die than hurt Uncle Joe's feelings. Well, you can't wear that thing in the wedding. There hasn't been a gown like that since Ma married Pa Cattle. <laughs> what can I do? Well, uh, you and Steve could run off, elope to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Say, that's an idea. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to beat your mother out of a wedding. Oh, can't you think of anything? Wait a minute. I forgot. The champ is arriving this afternoon. Huh? Cousin May. Yeah. When it comes to men, she's pretty good with a soft soap. Pretty good? Honey, she's the worldwide distributor. <laughs> Gosh sakes, Kate's cousin May, right? Right, son. Who might you be? Who well, I'm Sam. Sam Drucker. You're fooling. Oh, no, I never fool about that. Well, I, just, yeah, I, I remembered you as a bold man. Well, look, lady, this ain't exactly the Alcan Highway. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you've changed so. Oh, it's growing in just beautifully. Oh, come on. Do you mean it? Well, I most certainly do. Do you know that you look at least ten years younger? No kidding. Would you believe I hadn't noticed? I just might have to buy a comb for myself. <laughs> and maybe a baseball bat uh, to fight the ladies off with, that is. <laughs> well, who says I don't want it? You don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't say you haven't been warned. I just, uh, might strike when least expected. Hi, Sam. What's the matter? Got something in your eye? No, I haven't got something in my eye. I, I was just conversing with Kate's cousin, May. Oh, sure. Howdy, cousin May. Me and the cannon boss glad to see you. Now, hold it. Wait a minute. Don't tell me this is Floyd Smoot. Well, sure. Oh, but my goodness, you're so slim and trim and handsome. Well, sure. Oh, boy. Oh, sure. Oh, look at that poor fella, the way he's losing his hair. Well, to tell the truth, I hadn't really noticed. I was so entranced by his slim physique. Oh, my back. Oh, thank you, sir. I can't begin to tell you what a marvelous driver you are. Who's she looking at? Is there somebody around here besides us? Oh, no, she's just being polite. See, she thought she ought to say something nice to you because she'd already raved about my hair coming in. She had? Certainly. She ain't just polite. She's got a great eyesight, too. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to... Just... Boys, now hold it. This is no time for that. I've got to be flitting down to Shady Rest and putting my poor, pretty little cousin's mind at ease. Well, what do you mean, May? Well, now, don't think I don't know how a girl way out here must be worrying about what kind of a gown she's going to be married in. And you brought her one? Well, I most certainly did, darling. My <laughs> latest thing from Paris, a mini gown. A uh, what is gown? Why, Bridget Bardot wouldn't dream of being married in anything else. I tell you, I can't wait to see the expression on Betty Jo's face when she sees it. What is it? What is it? Uncle Joe, it's a British wallet, it's a wedding dress. What is it? No kidding. 
What's missing, the top or the bottom? Well, for your information, this happens to be a Paris original. Oh, one of them foreign jobs, huh? Well, let's see, they don't make their dresses any bigger than their automobiles. I want you to know that fat is very high fashion. Yeah, high is right. You ought to lower the hem a little. Oh, and look here. I brought these boots along to complete the outfit. Well, all she needs now is a saddle. <laughs> well, Betty Jo, Cousin Kate, don't you think it's simply breathtaking? Well, it, it, it just took my breath away. You're going to take your breath away. Wait till I show you the wedding dress that Betty Jo's really going to wear. Keep your eyes on this. <laughs> You're going to wear that? Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm afraid of that. Every time she looks at this dress, she gets all choked up. I hope she keeps a hold of herself at the wedding. I wouldn't want the colors of this flower to run. <laughs> did scold me for planning on things too much. Mom, since Steve's parents are arriving tomorrow, I thought I'd make up room four, okay? Yeah, I'll be fine, fine. What's that? What's, what's what? What's that dress? Oh, this. This is the uh, dress, uh, yeah. Oh, Mom. Wow, it's a beautiful old-fashioned wedding gown. It is attractive, isn't it? You never mentioned anything about this. We were kids, and we used to go up in the attic for clothes to dress up in. But you never said anything about... your wedding gown. I was saving it for the first girl who got married. But Betty Jo just found her. I know, and she's very thrilled about it. So, this is my secret. Oh, Mom, you, you must feel awful. Oh, no, not really. You know, your father had a favorite book, and he used to read to me from it. One part I'll always remember. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. You may give them your love, but you may not give them your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. How lovely. And simple. If you love your child, you help her fulfill her dreams, not your dreams for her. And that, as they say, is that. And so you see, Uncle Joe, that while I deeply appreciate your gesture, I've already bought my wedding gown. <laughs> no, that's not right. Maybe I better start with you first. <laughs> Cousin May, you're the sweetest thing in the whole world for bringing me that gown all the way from Paris. But, look, I've already bought my gown for the wedding. No, that's not right. Nothing's right.
gonna hurt someone. Maybe not. Now, I suppose I shouldn't tell you this, but, but I think there's something you ought to know. Now, listen. Well, of course I understand, darling, but why didn't you say something before? Boy, if they gave prizes for being a dumb fuck, I'd be the head quack on a duck farm. <laughs> of course it's all right. As a matter of fact, it's more than all right. It's the way it should be. I'm sure gonna miss my little pal. She was some engineer. Look at it this way, Floyd. You're not losing an engineer. The Valley's gaining a crop dusting team. <laughs> Carson Elliott crop dusting team, I might add. <laughs> I'm so glad you could come. We'll see you at the reception. I understand there was quite a commotion over the wedding gown. How did it finally work out? Uh, Betty Jo is wearing the one she got from the store. Oh, good. Donald, it's time to go into church. Oh, we'll see you later. It's about that time. Oh, my. When I think of all the Sundays I've walked down the aisle of that old church with my little girls, and now... The, the, Kate, the... Kate, try and hold back the mushy stuff. We've got a long ways to go. <laughs> oh. Uh, you can drop me off here. You've got more important work to do. Barney? Beloved, we're gathered here in the sight of God and in the presence of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate and is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently and soberly and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. In token of your careful consideration of the obligations of marriage and of your free and lawful choice of each other as partners for life, you will now please join your right hands and repeat after me. I, Stephen. I, Stephen. Take thee, Betty Jo. Take thee, Betty Jo. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. 
I, Betty Jo. I, Betty Jo. Take thee, Stephen. Take thee, Stephen. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. These rings, the emblem of eternal friendship, are given and received as the visible sign of your mutual pledges. For as much as Stephen and Betty Jo have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and this company, I now pronounce that they are husband and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. You may now kiss the bride. Joe, I'm so happy for you. Son, you've got a real prize. Now be good to her. <laughs> oh, hold it, everybody. Say cheese. And did you see her pearl earring? Real French antiques. I gave them to her for something old. Oh. <laughs> she was so lovely. Her little tomboy sister. <laughs> she was wearing the perfume that we gave her for something new. <laughs> so I go. Could I? I lent her my mammy's cameo brooch for something borrowed. <laughs> what did you get for Uncle Joe? Something blue. Well, what was it? Oh, there was this souvenir I happened to have. Silly thing. I felt it was just right for Betty Joe. <laughs> well, are you? Are you not going to tell us what it is? Well, a long time ago, I met this dance hall girl in Topeka. See. She gave me a little blue garter. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You know, Betty Jo, when I saw you walking down the aisle in that dress, for the first time in a long time, I felt your father sitting beside me. And we were both so proud of you. Take care of her, Steve. God bless you both. Thank you, my very dear mother, for everything. All right, come on now. It's time for the reception. Steve, uh, let's take the pictures and then change clothes right after the reception line. Okay, darling, but what? Uh, well, I was just thinking, well, maybe someday we'll have a daughter getting married, and uh, I want to take good care of this dress. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
redemption. This has been a Filmways presentation. <laughs>